the Russell paradox is one of the most famous paradoxes in math, and uh, I thought I'd make a short video showing how the Russell paradox basically shows that naive set theory is inconsistent, or in other words, that we can derive a contradiction if we assume the axioms of naive set theory. Many people become acquainted with the Russell paradox through the Barber paradox, where you consider this barber who's only allowed to shave people who don't shave themselves. And then you ask the question, well, does the barber shave himself or not? And then that question leads to a paradox, or more precisely a contradiction, where you, can, you have to say that the barber has to simultaneously shave himself and not shave himself. And uh, there are some linguistic ways out of the paradox, depending on how you phrase the question, but um, here's a set theoretic paradox. So again, what Russell's paradox did was uh, expose a major contradiction in pre-ZFC, or Zimmerl Frankel, with the axiom of choice set theory, which is also called naive set theory. So the problem comes when you accept the truth of this axiom, which is called the axiom of unrestricted comprehension. So what this axiom says is that there exists a set A such that all the members of the set A satisfy some proposition involving X. And essentially what this does is it says that for any proposition that I could plop into this phrase here, any proposition I could think of, there's some set which can list out all the objects with this property. And this doesn't seem completely ridiculous uh, prima facie. Uh, for example, this axiom would guarantee the existence of a set A such that all the objects of the set A, which I'll call X, have the property that X is red. So it's just saying that I, if I can conceive of this proposition X is red, then I should be able to list out all the elements X that satisfy that proposition or that make that, make that proposition true. And of course, you can do something like this, where the set A would have things like fire trucks, apples, and a bunch of other red objects. Uh, correspondingly, you can prop, you can plop in another proposition, such as X is not a motorcycle, and B would just list all the elements that are not motorcycles. And again, the set B would contain objects like fire trucks, apples, dogs, cats. Uh, more interestingly, it would also contain B as a member of itself, because the set B is not a motorcycle, so B gets to live within the set B. So this notion of uh, sets being members of themselves is where the problem is going to arise. And as I said before, when we consider the set A, we found that A is not a member of A, right? Because A is not red, so A doesn't get to be within A, so A is not an A. And we also found that B is also in B because the set B is not a motorcycle, right? So B gets to be in B. And as I said, the problem is going to arise when we start considering these wacky sets and start asking whether sets can contain themselves or not. So hopefully you can see that if I just plop any proposition here onto the right-hand side after that such that symbol, then that axiom is going to say that that set has to exist. So let's now consider the pathological set, R, which I'm going to denote the Russell set, or name it after Russell. So this is going to be a set that contains all the elements X, such that X is not a member of X. All right, and uh, prima facie, this seems like a coherent proposition. Uh, X is not an X. It's clearly coherent. Uh, it's, it doesn't equivocate or anything like that. And it's either true or false. Either X is not an X, or X is an X. And and uh, this X or, what I mean by that is the exclusive or, where either this proposition here is true, or this one is true. They can't both simultaneously be true or false. So now let's ask the, the pathological question whether R is a member of the set R. Now clearly, as I said here, either R is not an R or R is an R. And one of those two has to be true. They can't both be true and they both can't be false. So let's consider the two possibilities. Suppose R is in the set R. Now since R is in the set R, that means it has this property here. It makes this proposition true. So if R is an R, then I have to conclude that R is not an R, right? I'm just letting X be equal to R. So if R is in the set R, then R is not in the set R. So that leads to a contradiction if this assumption is true that R is an R. And since R is an R it has to be false, we have to conclude that R is not an R. But now if R is not in the set R, then I'm forced to include R within the set R because it, it makes this proposition true. And again, this leads to a contradiction. So what I see is that neither of these two statements, R being an R and R not being an R, can be true. So the conclusion that we draw from this, from this pathological question, is that if this set R exists, we can derive the truth of a contradiction. 
namely that R being in the set R implies that R, sorry, R not being in the set R implies that R is in the set R. And the converse, R being in the set R implies that R is not in the set R. So hopefully you can see from that, that argument that we've derived the truth of a contradiction if we assume the truth of that, that wacky axiom, the, the unrestricted comprehension axiom. So uh, from a historical perspective, what this paradox did was show that naive set theory, which assumed the truth of that unrestricted comprehension axiom, that it's inconsistent. Uh, where the word inconsistent just means that the truth of the axioms guarantees a truth of a contradiction. And th this is a big uh, historical moment, and, and a lot of philosophers like Frege uh, basically gave up some of their projects in terms of trying to uh, systematize mathematics and trying to give a precise axiomatic basis. Uh, basically, just Russell came up with this paradox, and Frege threw up his hands, and he just said, okay, all of mathematics is worthless now. And it basically destroyed his life. He didn't do too much more mathematical work after the Russell paradox came to light. So basically, uh, how do you, so in, in ZFC, how do you dodge this paradox? Because really, the, the historic motivation for a ZFC was to to get rid of this paradox, or basically say that these pathological sets are can't really exist, or they can't really exist in the, in the way I just described. So how do you dodge this paradox? So what you do is you modify this axiom uh, instead of uh, unrestricted comprehension, we're going to restrict comprehension. And the ZFC name for this this axiom is the axiom schema of separation. So here's the, the ZFC version of this axiom, where it's going to say that for all sets A, there exists some other set B such that all the objects within B have the property that X is simultaneously within the set A and some other proposition involving X. So notice what this axiom does. It, it, says that two things have to be true. That proposition involving X has to be true, and that X has to be in some other set A, which is assumed to exist. So basically what you're doing is you're saying that another set A has to first exist, and then we're going to consider those objects within B that satisfy that proposition. So basically you're not allowed to just plop in the proposition x is not an x into this right hand side anymore. So what you have to do is modify that, that bad set r uh, in terms of saying that r is going to consist of all the objects x such that x is in some other set a which is guaranteed to exist and that x is not an x. So this is the this is the pathological statement here x is not an x but we're also forced to, to uh, include that uh, x is in some other set a which is guaranteed to exist. So let's now uh, consider that, that Russell question again. Let's ask whether R is a member of itself or not. And again, R is either a member of itself or it's not. So let's first assume that R is in the set R. Now since it's in the set R, both of these propositions have to, have to be true. R has to be in the set A, that other set that was assumed, assumed to exist, and that R is not in R. And we can see that this assumption, R being in R, leads to a contradiction. And again, since R being an R leads to a contradiction, we conclude that R is not an R. And since R is not an R, that means one of these two propositions, either this one, X being an A, or X not being an X, has to be uh, false. So either X is not an A, or R is a member of the set R. Just the, the negation of one of these two propositions has to be true. Either R is not an A, or R is in the set R. Now, if we say that this one is the true proposition, then we get a contradiction. But if we say that this one is true, that R is not an A, then we're free of contradiction. So we just make the conclusion that R is not an R, and R is not in this set A. So R is not even in that set A that we assume to exist. So this set R is, is perfectly well formed. It's, it's free of contradiction. So the conclusion from this uh, this modification of the subset axiom is that we can say that this modified set R is free of contradiction and that the proposition R is an R is false. Right, that was the question that we first asked, whether R is an R or not. So we say that this question is false. And notice that we can say it's false. We, we're not forced to say it's always both true and false or it's neither true nor false. We can say that this proposition here, R being an R is false. 
or another way of saying that is that R is not an R, it's a true proposition. So notice that this, this modification of the subset axiom allows us to essentially dodge the Russell paradox. So that concludes this video. I hope you guys enjoyed this brief discussion on Russell's paradox. Uh, it's a big motivation for why people begin to study set theory. And uh, hopefully it's of interest, uh, especially to any computer scientists who are listening, since it's uh, a big precursor to Alan Turing's work on the Entscheidungs problem or the, the halting problem, uh, since it uses a basically a uh, self-referential proof uh, when, when he came up with that. So uh, if you enjoyed this video, check out some of my other videos on set theory. Give the video a thumbs up and feel free to subscribe. See you next time.